What's up, my guys? And welcome back to the Wrestling Report Card. I'm your host, Cody, and what this show is, is what I do is I take a pay-per-view, I break down each match, I give each match its own letter grade, and at the end, I tally them some bitches up, and I give that show, that pay-per-view, its own report card. So today, as you know, over in Saudi Arabia, we just had Crown Jewel 2022 take place. Where not only in the main event did you have Logan Paul trying his luck against the undisputed champ Roman Reigns, but we started off the night with Bobby Lashley taking on Brock Lesnar, and that was just part one of the Battle of Bohemians, as you had Braun Strowman taking on the 7'3", over 400 pound Omos. You also had Bianca Belair defending her title against Bayley in a barn burner of a last woman standing match and we had Bray Wyatt in the house and I'm really intrigued to see that storyline I know a lot of y'all are too so as y'all can tell we got a lot to talk about like always so go ahead buckle up your seat belts and let's get to great. Oh, and we're starting tonight off with some big men slapping man meat. That's right. We got Bobby Lashley taking on the beast, Brock Lesnar. And apparently, Bobby Lashley isn't a patient man because as Brock was casually walking around the ring making his way in, Bobby snuck up behind him and he sent that son bitch into the steel steps and that ended up injuring Lesnar's knee. And before you could say Vince McMahon, Lashley connected on three spears, the third one sending the beast crashing through the barricade. Brock got back in the ring, he answered with three suplexes, but that knee was clearly an issue when he went for the F5, which allowed Bobby to kick out. Lashley then hit a massive spine buster in the middle of the ring, then after trying for an all match, Lashley finally connected with the Hurt Lock, and it appeared to be over for Brock Lesnar, but somehow, after what seemed like hours, he made it to the ropes, and instead of letting the ropes just break the hold, Lesnar just launched from the ring post, landing himself on top of Lashley, and the ref went down, and he counted the one, two, three, and Brock Lesnar won by landing on top of Bobby Lashley. Damn it, Bobby. I'm gonna give that a C plus, man. I mean, it wasn't a bad match, but that ending, like if you videotape my energy before this match started versus afterwards after I saw that finish, you wouldn't even think I was the same person. I tell you what. Now, I really wonder, did Vince McMahon sneak into Saudi Arabia and write that ending? Because that's what it seemed like. Well, we got to move on. Because up next, we got the Women's Tag Team Championships on the line. As you got the champs, Asuka and Alexa Bliss, defending against Damage Control. And if I'm just being honest, these four ladies went out and put on a show. At one point, Damage Control had Alexa Bliss set up for a double superplex off of the ropes when Asuka ran over underneath them and then ended up powerbombing all three ladies down onto the mat. Then, as Alexa Bliss was setting up for the Twisted Bliss, with the crowd going crazy, EO and Asuka started brawling so bad that it distracted the ref. While that was happening, out of nowhere, Nikki Cross showed up. She DDT'd her former teammate Bliss, which allowed Damage Control to make the cover, get the 1-2-3, and recapture their tag team titles. I'm going to slap a B- minus on that. Again, that was a solid match. I'm just thoroughly confused as to why we took the titles off of Damage Control in the first place just to give them to Asuka and Alexa Bliss. But hey, what do I know? We got to keep moving on, though, because next up, we got Drew McIntyre taking on Karrion Cross, but this time, it's in Saudi Arabia, and it's in a steel cage. First things first, I got to admit, the hourglass and the sword that they did up in the Saudi sky with those drones had to be some of the most badass shit that I have ever seen. Even Cross and Scarlet were in awe looking up at it. But that's enough of the drones, that's enough of the lines, because by God, we got these two maniacs locked inside of a steel cage. Now, that was mainly so that Scarlet couldn't interfere like she did last time at Extreme Rules, but she somehow was still able to distract Drew, which first allowed Cross to hit the crosshammer elbow. He then went to escape by climbing out of the cage, but Drew caught him halfway up, and then he superplexed that son bitch back down onto the mat. Drew then called for the ref to open the door, but when he crawled over, that Jezebel Scarlet stopped him and sprayed mace all over Drew and the ringside official. But this time, that wasn't enough to keep the Scotsman down. He got up, he laid Cross out. However, this time when he called for the door, Scarlet had swiped the key from the official and locked it shut. Drew said, screw it, I'll just climb over the top. And this ultimately backfired on Scarlett as she was struggling to unlock the door for Cross. It was too late as Drew McIntyre was able to hit the ground first, declaring him your winner in this steel cage match. I'm rocking with a B on this. Definitely a step up from their strap on. <laughs> I mean, strap match at Extreme Rules. Hey, you know what I mean, damn it. But we got to keep moving on tonight, though, because up next, we got Trio's action, where you got the OC taking on the Judgment Day, 
who are accompanied, of course, by none other than Miss Rhea Ripley. Now, after some great in-ring action from all six guys, that damn Ripley got involved once again, and I think Michael Cole said it best when he said, someone needs to kick her ass. This led to Finn being able to hit the coup de grace and the Judgment Day get the 1-2-3 clean over AJ Styles in the OC. For that one, I'm going to go with a B plus. Listen, we'd be here all day if I try to list off everything that these six did in the ring. I tell you what. Also, just in case you didn't know, Rhea Ripley is a problem, my guy. I can't wait till we throw her in a feud with somebody, hopefully a returning Beth Phoenix. But hey, up next, we're gonna have even bigger men slapping more man meat as you have the six foot eight, 340 pound Braun Strowman taking on the seven foot three, 420 pound Omos. And for the first time ever, Braun Strowman looks small standing next to the Nigerian giant. Omos went on to control most of the match. Braun kept trying to pick him up and slam him, but Omos was just too big. Every time Braun did try, Omos would laugh and then body slam him in return. But then, after tiring the giant out, Braun caught Omos coming off the ropes. He picked that big son bitch up. He hit his running power slam. And by God, Braun Strowman is indeed the monster among monsters as he got the one, two, three. So this one I'm going with a B minus. And don't hang me out to dry yet. Was this a five star match? No. Was it the best match you're ever going to see? Probably not. But the fact that we saw two literal behemoths go at it, hey, that's pretty cool to see. Plus, I think we all can agree that this was way better than we thought it was going to be. Now, hopefully after this, we send Omos down to NXT and let him get better and just run wild as the giant down there. But next, we got the Miz Tag Team Champions on the line as you got the Usos taking on the Brawling Brutes. Now, at one point in this match, the Saudi crowd was chanting, Send me! Sammy and Jay Uso stopped in the middle of the match and yelled, Sammy ain't coming. <laughs> you gotta love this stuff, man. One thing to note is that the Usos brutally took Sheamus out in the build-up to this match. And I tell you what, which and Ridge were out there scrapping for my guy Sheamus. And they got also close with Ridge and Jay Uso with the white noise, but Jay was able to kick out at the last minute. After another close near fall from the Brawly Brutes, Jimmy was able to make a blind tag. Butch didn't see as Butch went to climb the ropes. And then Jay Uso, with his shirt around his ankles, was able to still land a super kick and then meet Butch atop the ropes and feed him down to his brother for the Avalanche 1D. And yes, the Usos get the 1-2-3 to retain those tag team championships. That's getting an A-. I mean, to nobody's surprise, that one definitely lived up to the hype. And look, I've known about Butch Pete Dunn for a while now, but I have to admit, I have been sleeping on my guy Ridge. That son of a bitch right there is stronger than an ox. Now, speaking of the strong, or the strongest, next up, we got the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, defending her title against Bayley. And this has been a rivalry that's been going on since SummerSlam. Well, it looks like it's all going to end here in Saudi Arabia in a last woman standing match. Now, in this, Bailey was the first to reach for some weaponry as she grabbed a kendo stick and a steel chair. After those didn't work, we see Bailey going under the ring yet again, this time pulling out a ladder. After scaling the barricade and hitting the champ with a running clothesline, guess where Bailey went to again? Ding dong, that's right, she's under the ring. This time, she's got the tables. Bianca then went on a roll, hitting Bailey with a suplex onto the ramp. Bailey hits her with a chair shot as, as she went to climb the ropes. Bianca got up and just lost that chair right back in Bailey's face. We fast forward at one point, Bailey had the chair trapped behind the steel steps and she just started teeing off on Bianca with a kendo stick. Bianca finally broke free and then was in pursuit with a kendo stick of her own, but when she caught up to her atop the entrance ramp, Bailey hit her with a Bailey to Bailey, trapping Bianca into some kind of box like structure. Bianca broke out yet again, but this time Bailey was ready and she was able to counter her. Next thing you know, Bailey's driving a damn golf cart. However, that ultimately backfired as Bianca sent Bailey off that son of a bitch flying into a table before going down, picking her up, and power bombing her through that same table. Even with all that and getting slammed into some chairs, it still wasn't enough to keep Bailey down for the 10 count. Then, after a KOD from the champ, she got smart as she trapped Bailey inside of the ladder before sliding that son of a bitch under the ropes, which worked because Bailey was unable to answer the 10 count, and that allowed Bianca Belair to get the W and retain her Raw Women's Championship. Yeah, that's getting A, bro. I mean, hats off to you, ladies, as they put on, in my opinion, what was the match of the night. Plus, that finish was really nice because it keeps Bianca on her roll while protecting Bailey in the process. But up next, we cut the lights. 
You put your flashlights on your phones in the air because we got Bray Wyatt coming down to the ring with another compelling promo. He started this one off by saying, sure, people may love the idea of Bray Wyatt or what Bray Wyatt's capable of, but no one actually loves Bray Wyatt. Hell, Bray Wyatt doesn't even love Bray Wyatt. He then lets us know that all of his masks are off and what you're seeing right now is actually Bray Wyatt. Just as he was getting his confidence back and being himself up on the screen, we go back to the Uncle Howdy character who says that no matter what Bray is saying, he's going to give in like he always does and put on the mask and cause chaos and violence. However, we all know what Mr. Wyatt is capable of with or without a mask, no matter what that damn Mr. Howdy says, Uncle Howdy, I don't even care. But that one, I'm gonna slap a B plus on that. I mean, Bray Wyatt just don't miss on the mic. And I love the slow burn of all this because I feel like the payoff is really gonna be worth it. It's gonna be legend, wait for it, damn it. Bray Wyatt, we are glad that you are back, my guy. I know you have been fighting your demons, but so have we. And I think I speak for us all when I say that Bray Wyatt can make this shitty life just a little bit less shitty. But hey, that's enough talk because it's time for the main event. You got the undisputed Universal WWE Champion of the World, Roman Reigns, taking on the YouTuber, Logan Paul. <laughs> now, like him or not, you can't knock Logan Paul and his abilities in the ring. He was out there hitting stuff like a blockbuster, standing moonsault, gut wrench powerbomb. Hell, he even hit a Superman punch and a buckshot lariat. Shout out to my guy, Hangman Page. Now, just as Paul was gathering momentum, boom, Reigns hit the rock bottom, but then Logan landed that one lucky punch. Did it work? Nice game plan there. He even followed it up with a second Superman punch, but the champ still kicked out. Logan Paul then cleared off the Arabian announce table, laying out Roman on top of it. He then grabbed his cell phone from his ringside entourage and recorded himself climbing the rope and hitting a splash down onto the table, sending the champ crashing through it. But then out came the Usos and they took care of both members of Paul's entourage. But then the music hits and down comes the brother from the same mother, Jake Paul. He ran down, laid out both of the Usos like they were nothing. Logan then climbed the ropes and hit the frog splash back in the ring. But once again, the champ was able to kick out. And then, down came the enforcer of the bloodline, Solo Sokoa. He and Jake Paul got into it, and it actually had to be separated. And during all of this, Logan Paul took to the skies, laying out both of the Usos. However, when he got back in the ring, he forgot he was in there with a shot. And it went like this. Superman punch. Spear. One, two, three. And still, your undisputed Universal WWE Champion of the World. Roman Reigns. Well, that main event, I'm going to give it a B. Yeah, I know it was a little slow at times, but what can I say? I was entertained, and once again, Logan Paul hasn't shocked the entire world with the performance that he put on against Roman Reigns in this match over inside. Woo! Man, well, it looks like we came to the end of another episode, so y'all know the drill. We got all the grades in. Now let's take a look at the report card. After tallying everything up, we came out with a final letter grade of a B. That's right, an 86%. Just another great pay-per-view as we're still in the age of Triple A and it rolls on. Well, hey, once again, I'm Cody. I do appreciate all you guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That would be really dope. Or you could also comment and tell me how dumb I am. God forgive you like the video because I know it's terrible. But hey, I appreciate y'all once again. I hope all y'all stay safe. And have a nice day.